Hello, my name is Milt and I'm the lead pastor here at Birch Ridge Community Church. And I wanna personally welcome you as part of our online family. Listen, for whatever reason at all you've joined, welcome and know that you are loved beyond understanding by the one that we have gathered to worship today, Jesus Christ. I pray that your relationship with him is deepened through this time today. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, may today be the day that you receive him by faith into your heart and life. It's the most important decision that you will ever make. And if you are relatively new to the Birch Ridge online messages, and if you enjoy them, would you consider hitting that little subscribe or like button below this video? Thank you, you're awesome. And if you find value in our online messages and want to contribute financially to this ministry, simply go to our website at birchridge.org and click on the Give Online button at the top of that page. From there, you can give one time or even recurring. So, God bless you as you joyfully commit to what God is doing here. Many times, people want to know what the purpose of a church is. And at Bertridge, we want the whole world to know why we exist. And, and we'll repeat it often so that it stays with us all through the week. So, let's say it together. What's our purpose? Leading people to become fully devoted followers of Jesus. Very good. Again, welcome home and may God richly bless you today. Well, hello there. Thank you for joining in today as we continue in this series called Life. And today we're talking about our temper. As we consider how fast our moods can change, we really need to be honest and realize our tempers can get us into lots of trouble. I mean, regardless of how we try to rationalize and justify, anger is a deadly disease. But before we dive in, would you help me recite our family declaration? Are you ready? Here we go. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Therefore, I will hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Studies tell us the average man loses his temper six times a week. And a woman, she only loses hers about three times a week. Now, I didn't write that study. I'm just reporting what I found, okay? Women are most angry with people while men are most angry at things. And, and I'd have to agree, that's true. I mean, I get more frustrated with machinery or things that I buy and put together. You know, I'll, I'll buy something, bring it home, put it together, and it doesn't work. And of course, then someone will ask, well, did you read the instructions? <laughs> no, I don't need no stinking instructions and I don't have anger issues. <laughs> And we all know that some ladies are still mad at some girl for stealing their boyfriend in junior high, right? And, and they're like 68 years old now right? and still angry. Surprisingly, singles are twice as angry as married folks. I shared that with a few of my single friends and they're like, no, we're not. <laughs> okay, point made, right? And, and not surprisingly, men are more physical with their anger than women, and, and sadly, anger is expressed more in the home than any other place. In fact, over the past decade, domestic violence has increased by 100%. Experts estimate that incidents involving road rage increase at a rate of about 7% per year. <laughs> Obviously, these experts have not been on the Kenai Peninsula in July trying to make a left-hand turn, okay? Just saying. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 32 says, better to be patient than powerful, better to have self-control than to conquer a city. We really need to get a grip on our anger and on our tempers. So today, I'm going to share a few things about anger that we need to understand. And then I want to offer some, some keys to managing our tempers. Sound fair? Okay, here we go. Number one, anger is contagious. 
Anger is contagious. Now watch this. If you're an angry parent or grandparent, guess what? You're teaching your kids and grandkids to be angry. I mean, it's absolutely contagious. Former baseball manager Billy Martin tells a story about a hunting trip he took with Mickey Mantle. Mickey had a friend who was going to let them hunt his ranch. And so when they got to the ranch, Mickey told Billy to wait in the car while he checked in with his buddy. So he walked up the door and knocked. The friend quickly gave permission, but then asked Mickey for a favor. He, he, he said, I've got this pet donkey. It's, it's gone blind and, and I just don't have the heart to put him down. So he asked Mickey to do it for him. Well, of course, Mickey agreed. But as he came back to the car, he pretended to be angry. He grumbled and then slammed the car door. Billy asked, what's wrong? Mickey stated that his buddy had changed his mind and, and, they, and they no longer could hunt his land. Mickey said, I'm so angry, I'm going to go out there and shoot one of his donkeys. Billy was like, you can't do that. Mickey said, oh yeah, you just watch me. So Mickey jumped out of the car with his rifle in hand, went into the barn and shot the donkey. As he was leaving the barn, he heard two more shots. He went running out to see that Billy had taken his rifle out as well. What are you doing? Mickey yelled. <laughs> we'll show him. I just killed two of his cows. <laughs> Oops. You see, anger can be dangerously contagious. Listen, listen. We are what we hang around, okay? It's just true. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 24 says, Don't befriend angry or associate with hot-tempered people, or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. Another version, another version says, bad temper is contagious. Don't get infected. <laughs> so number one, anger is contagious. And number two, anger is caustic. Anger is caustic. Alexander the Great, in a fit of rage, struck one of his generals, who was also a very good friend. And in a fit of rage, he hit and killed him. Following his fit, he was heard saying, I've conquered the world, but I can't conquer my temper. I can only wonder how many lives have been destroyed and damaged because of anger. I mean, it's just so senseless. And remember this, angry words and outbursts can't simply be redacted or retracted. Once they're out there, they're out there. Proverbs 19.19 19 says, hot-tempered people must pay the penalty. Each of us will give an answer for our anger. You do realize that, don't you? I mean, we might think we can escape the penalty for losing our tempers or bullying someone, but we can't. There will be a day of reckoning. And here's the third thing. Anger is conforming. Anger is conforming. Our anger can become a defining characteristic of ourselves. Have, have, you, ever, have you ever heard someone described as an angry person? Like I remember doing a funeral a few years back, and at the fellowship time after the service, I overheard a relative of this guy say, you know, he was just an angry man, like angry all the time. <laughs> listen, listen, I know I'm not always the easiest to get along with, and I totally acknowledge that I'm a type A personality, but I pray that no one ever says that of me. I mean, what an incredibly sad commentary to be known for anger issues. So we've got to get a grip on our temper or it will get a grip on us. So, once again, I'm going to offer three keys from God's Word, and it'll absolutely work. Listen, without a doubt, it'll work. But you have to really want it, and you have to apply these keys to your life. Are you ready? Okay, the first thing is we really need to calm down. We need to calm down. Some of you are like, come on, preacher, this is so trivial. <laughs> really? Then why aren't we doing it? Why is anger still kicking people's tails today? Why is anger such a prevalent, violent behavior? James tells us that human anger does not achieve the righteousness God desires. You see, when we're frustrated and angry, we aren't thinking clearly. We don't think clearly in crisis. It's just a fact. 
When we find ourselves getting angry, we need to, we need to take a step back and calm down. Proverbs 29, 11 says, Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. You see, I contend anger is a choice. Anger is a choice. It's just true. I mean, think about it. Have you ever had one of those, one of those arguments at home with, with like yelling and going on? I mean, you don't have to worry about it. It probably doesn't happen at your house, right? But I'll admit it has happened at our house. Maddie, of course. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. But, but many of you know the scenario, right? I mean, there's yelling and screaming and then all of a sudden the phone rings, right? And, and right in the middle of the, of the yelling session, you pick up the phone. Hello, Bora residents. Jesus loves you, <laughs> right? I mean, seriously, anger is a choice and God encourages us to make the choice to calm down. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 27 says, A truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even-tempered. Here's the next step. Once you calm down, think things through. Think things through. Calm down and think things through. Here's a fact. Every time you blow up, there's a negative consequence. I guarantee it. Will Rogers once said, people who fly into a rage seldom make a good landing. <laughs> and I can take it a farther step and say they never do, okay? Proverbs 29, 22 says, an angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sin. And it's absolutely true. You've probably heard the old adage, loose lips sink ships. Well, here's another one. If you blow, a lot can go. Your character, your respect, your health, your job, even your family. James Dobson wrote an article called when, when You Feel Like Screaming. And in this article, a group of 9 to 12 year olds were asked two questions. What do you like most about your mom? What do you like least about your mom? Now listen, listen. The answers to the first question varied greatly. But the answers to the second question were exactly the same. They all used the phrase, or very closely to, I can't stand it when my mom screams. You see, here's the deal, and you need, to, you need to understand this. In the short term, screaming works. It absolutely works. I mean, fear has tremendous power, especially when the child is young. But here's the catch. That child grows up, and in time, alienation begins, and eventually the relationship can be lost. So I want you to write something down for me. I want you to write two words. Write the word anger and write the word danger. Can anyone tell me what letter differentiates the two? D, isn't it? D. Can I tell you what that stands for? Dumb. <laughs> okay? When you display anger, you're in danger of losing all kinds of beautiful things in your life. And it's just dumb. So, calm down. Think things through. And number three, get real. Get real. We've seriously got to get real and be honest with ourselves. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 says, Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves. I think you already know that anger isn't because of anything on the outside. It has everything to do with what's on the inside. And we must ask, why? I contend that anger is simply a warning light that there's something going on deeper inside. I mean, that, that's all it really is. So, so let's, let's play this out. It could be something as simple as being tired. I've got to admit that when I'm tired, I can get a bit cranky, right? So what's the answer? <laughs> well, turn off the TV and go to bed, right? Sometimes it's that simple. Sometimes it's the demands of life. Like deadlines tend to bring the worst out in all of us. Like every week, I get a case of PMS. <laughs> I do. Pre-message syndrome, okay? <laughs> Each week, the pressure of getting a message written and done in time and done well, it weighs heavy on me and sometimes makes me irritable. And I'm sure Maddie would agree. Sometimes it's just a matter of being in a hurry. <laughs> the other day I was in a bit of a hurry and an LOL pulled out in front of me. It's a little old lady, okay? Bless her heart. She pulled out right in front of me and proceeded to drive a full 15 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone. <laughs> and I'm sure she loves Jesus, but at that moment 
I wanted her to meet him. <laughs> okay, but here's the key. Listen, she didn't make me mad. My hurried life did. Does that make sense? I mean, we have to look at that. So, so we must ask ourselves, why am I angry? What's the real issue? And I want every eye to look here for a moment because I'm going to tell you what it is. It's Jesus, okay? Anger is really the symptom of the reality that there's something wrong with our relationship with Jesus every single time. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, watch this. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun, okay? The old life is gone and the new life begins. Begins where? On the inside, right? When we really realize who we are in Christ, we'll stop expressing who we were. Let me repeat that. You don't, don't miss that. When we realize who we are in Christ, we'll stop expressing who we were. Okay? Bottom line is that whatever is inside us comes out. Everybody agree? Like ketchup packs. <laughs> if you squeeze one of those, does mustard come out? No. Ketchup does, because that's what's on the inside. By the way, those things are awesome to put under toilet seats and along edges of drawers. <laughs> Susan isn't all that amused, but I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Listen, when we express anger, it's only a display of what's inside. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 9 says, Control your temper, for anger labels you a fool. A few years ago, while Maddie and I were on vacation, we stopped in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for a legit Philly cheesesteak sandwich. We were sitting in this cool restaurant, sitting in this booth, and a tall black man came in and sat down with, I believe, his granddaughter. This man had to have been all of six foot five, and he had quite a bit of gray in his once black hair. But the thing that we noticed about him the most was the peace and the joy that exuded from his face. I mean, the natural, constant, genuine smile on his face spoke loudly to Maddie and me as we watched him. I mean, a person didn't need to ask if Jesus was in his heart. It was plain as could be. You see, whatever is in here has to come out. May we shine like that old man. Let's pray. Father, I pray that you do something amazing in each one of us today. Ultimately, we want to be more like you today than we were yesterday. May we be more like you tomorrow than we were today. Father, for those of us that struggle with anger and tempers, would you please do a supernatural work in our hearts and minds? Would you impress your word into our hearts today? and help us to implement these simple but powerful keys to controlling our tempers. God, help us to calm down and think through our thoughts and feelings so that we don't say things that are hurtful and mean. And help us to get real with who we really are. And help us to identify that our anger is really something deeper than what it appears on the surface. God, help us to be wise like Jesus. Help us to be patient and kind like Jesus. Help us to love like Jesus. I mean, God, we know that Jesus got angry, but we also know that his anger was always righteous and he never sinned in that anger. So Father, please help us to be angry only for the things that anger Jesus. And in our anger, please help us to not sin. We love you, Jesus, and we pray these things in your name. Amen. And amen. you I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship
worship you You are here Moving in the midst I worship you I worship you You are here Working in this place I worship you I worship you You are way maker Miracle worker Promise keeper Light in the darkness My God That is who you are Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are here, man. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, you are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light. Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see that you're working Even when I don't feel that you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Waymaker, miracle worker Keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.